What's the most fricked up thing you've seen someone do at work and still not get fired? Had a girl steal money from other crew's bags in the locker change room. Instead of firing her they just took the door off the room and put in a camera so now we have to show up to work in uniform with a shirt over it. It's very hot here and I end up sweaty by the time I get to work. She also called in one time saying her sister died and needs time off. She never had a sister. After all this she got rehired after she quit for another job that didn't end up working out. I worked at a web hosting tech support company and a co-worker accidentally deleted another customer's website. This was on a Unix system, so it wasn't possible to undo the delete. He deleted the command history to cover his mistake and then told the customer that the website was lost due to a hard drive failure. The customer hadn't been keeping backups and said that he lost his entire livelihood. The employee told management about the situation and they ran with it to avoid getting sued. They told the customer that hardware issues sometimes happen and because he hadn't opted into our managed backup services, the data loss was on him. They offered the customer several months of free web hosting as compensation and the problem went away. A week after seeing this play out, I put in my two weeks notice. Very large IT companies pull that sort of behavior too. Used his corporate credit card for over $10k in personal purchases. He was reprimanded, but not fired or made to pay the company back. Within the next year he did the exact same thing and only then was he fired. Dang someone bought a $300 lamp for their office and expensed it at my last job and they were fired. I worked at a school for kids who need emotional support. We had a classroom maid who would scream at kids until they cried and then actively mock them for crying. These kids were 7 and came from horrifically abusive houses. It sucked to work in a place that allowed abusive behavior to continue. She was close family friends with the principal. It's very hard to help a child when they learn from a young age that adults aren't able to make things better and adults are capable of incredibly mean things. This was reported. She still got a letter of rec out of her BFF the principal, but she no longer works with children. Please remember that adults who show maladaptive behavior might have been these children. It's never too late to be kind to someone. Adults may be less cute than children, but they still deserve a world that is kind to them and gives them hope. This is the most infuriating one here. The other posts have been about laziness or ineptitude costing money or time. But this is evil behavior doing damage that can't even be quantified. And for it to be protected. Freaking maddening. Destroy an overpass with an excavator improperly loaded on a trailer. 450 John Deere excavator on Iran's triple axle lobed with a jeep and booster. Boom was about one featuring too high at 60 miles per hour. This is the biggest excavator you can haul around these parts without disassembling it. We call that creating jobs. A whole project for the price of one guy's livelihood. Forge a document. It was so obvious, then lie about not forging it, then admit to forging it once lie was just slightly questioned. One partner at the firm wanted her fired, but another one didn't. The forger stayed. Energize a circuit someone was still working on. Accidentally send out the entire company's 3,000 plus employees, headcount to the company distro. File contained everyone's salary, birthday, government numbers, etc. Saw a guy whip out his dong and start running around trying to pee on this one guy. He got a splash on him too. Active duty military here, for anyone curious. I seem to get the feeling that a fair portion of the military is about as gay as you can get without being actively gay. These stories are just reinforcing that. Guy got caught on video backing up into a BMW at a dealership. Got out looked at it and just left. Still works here. IDK how. He must have a video of the boss blowing another dude or something. He must have a video of the boss blowing another dude or something. Is inspecting the damage with his hands on his head. Puts hand on his chin. Takes out his phone and plays a grainy video and points it towards the security camera with a stern look. A few years ago I was working in a big company in my hometown. They hired me to create a website because they wanted to get bigger. A graphic fashion designer in the same company thought I was hired for her department because our offices were close and because I was doing both the programming and the design of the website. 
I had an appointment with another company that would help us set up secure online payments and manage inventories across our stores in the main factory. Graphic designer welcomed the representatives of this company, not even her task at all, and cancelled the appointment and the contract because she didn't believe I was good enough with computers. This is why every project has a manager, layers and layers of them. Called a customer stupid for leaving his phone behind, and refused to let him back in the theater so he could find it. Phone ended up getting stolen by one of the overnight cleaners, and after a few days, was brought back and the customer finally got his phone back. At a previous job, we had an employee that was called in to clean on an as needed basis. The employee, who we will call Fred, owed a lot of child support. After an unusually long break of not working, we called Fred in to clean the workplace. I think he expected to be paid under the table, because when he was given a paycheck, it was dang near zero because of all the back due child support he owed that we were forced to take from his paycheck. He literally started screaming, swearing, calling the boss every name you can think of, punching walls and threatened to shoot up the place. The boss still calls him back to work as needed to clean because he is really good at cleaning. Comma is really good at cleaning. Leon was really good at cleaning too. He liked throwing ice cubes into the deep fryer. He'd stand far enough away that he wouldn't get splashed, which made it a complete surprise to the person working the fryer. If you've never done this, it kind of causes a mini explosion of bubbles in molten grease, which splashes everywhere and, at the very least, makes a mess. When this got too boring, he started stealing kids meal toys and chucking them into the fryer. It took longer for them to start melting, and if he couldn't get them out, we had to turn the thing off for the rest of the day because it takes hours for it to cool off long enough to retrieve something, and then at least another hour to heat back up. I can't remember what it was that he threw, but it caught on fire and he ended up pulling it out with a pair of metal tongs and threw it in the sink. Then he turned on the water and made, to his surprise, a bigger fire. Did he get burned? Yes. Did he get fired? Number. Did he do it again? Sort of. I think he went back to ice cubes after that. TLDR. Technically he got fired, but it was with actual fire. The boss just kind of shook her head and let him keep working there. My co-workers got caught in a compromising position in the walk-in where food is stored. Not even a write-up. They were in the closet making babies and I saw one of the babies and the baby looked at me. Store manager got caught adding hours he didn't work to his time card. He got a reprimand and they removed the ability for managers to edit their own hours. About a month later he gets caught using another manager's login to add more hours he didn't work. Another slap on the wrist and is still working at the same place. We're gonna keep slapping you on the wrist until you figure out a good way of doing it and not getting caught. Run along now, and think about it some more. I worked with a guy who literally had no job. He was the studio supervisor but there was no activity in the studio to supervise because the studio had effectively become non-operational. He coasted for a full 8 years at this job. He would come in the morning, open his email, get coffee, gossip and complain about the industry for an hour, leave for an hour, come back for lunch, leave for another 3 hours, come back, send a few emails and then officially leave for the day. It was infuriating and majestic. A guy I worked with ran a food truck into an airplane. When they drug tested him he peed super dirty. After being told that he'd be getting random drug tests for a while, they showed up at his house within a week. Told them he couldn't because he just smoked yesterday. He was still employed when I transferred from that airport. One day that same guy crap his pants at work and sat in the break room until the smell became pretty loud. Someone told him he should go home. His response was, no, dog. The damage is already done. My favorite phrases. Peed super dirty and smell became pretty loud. That was a fun read. I worked at a pizza restaurant when I was 16. Place was absolute anarchy. Impossible to get fired. I'd smoke weed with my bosses. They joke with me try not to get too high today. All while on the clock. Supervisor would take an hour or more on his 30 minutes breaks and come back blasted as frick. We'd all make ourselves free food whenever we wanted. No one was properly trained, so obviously proper procedures were out the window. No one would claim their tips so we were being sued by the IRS. Again no one followed procedure, so the health department was on our butt. Yikes.
This sounds like every non-chain pizza place. My boss forged my name on a number of documents, because she didn't have the required certifications to sign the documents herself and I had refused to sign them. I know this, because after things went horribly south they tried to claim I had been the one to screw up, and showed me my her signature. She got promoted again instead of fired, that way I didn't have to quit. You will never guess whose mother owned the company. I worked at a really nice restaurant and our head chef at the time would come and so spun out on him he would admit to people he was seeing shadow people and would often have to help us on the line only to be a total mess. Also at the same place one of his other friends who he smoked with was noticeably tweaked and cut half his finger off on the slicer. Ah, food service. We hired this woman to my team. Her job was to do exactly what I did. We work from home, but we have constant conference calls and a ton of work to do. It's simply not possible to slack off without being noticed. I trained her and she shadowed me for a couple of months. She should have been ready to go off on her own, but she kept asking the same questions again and again. It's like she wasn't even sort of listening to anything we said, which was super annoying. But then, about 3 months in, she disappeared. Like stopped logging into calls, stopped logging into Skype, stopped everything. We emailed, texted, and called for a while, until she finally responded that she had been in the hospital with a hernia. And now my mother had hernia surgery in her 70s and was home within a few hours. So, red flag. We were also stunned and deeply offended that she never, ever bothered to call, text, email, anything to say she'd be out. Never in my 20 year career have I seen anything like it, in my personal opinion. I thought she should have been fired right then and there. But, our boss didn't want to make a big deal out of it, she didn't want to tell the big boss, for some reason. I'm still baffled by that, but that meant neither the powers that be nor HR had any idea it had even happened. So eventually, after having fallen off the planet for about 10 days, new hire finally came back. Both our boss and I counseled her a lot about communication. Things happen, we get it, just talk to us, let us know what's going on. Benefit of the doubt. Right, yeah, a little over a month later, she did it again. At first I noticed she wasn't joining calls or logging into Skype and she kept saying she was having connection issues. Fine, once again, tell US, and for god's sake, call tech support. But then she was offline for an entire week, so we tried hunting her down again. Nothing, no response, no communication, nothing. This time, the issue was escalated and HR got involved. After a total of two weeks, she apparently told HR she was having medical issues. She was counseled that she had to log on and fill out her timesheets to reflect she was out of office for all the time she was gone. She was given a deadline of a week to do this. This never happened, and she was still employed. Please note, at this point she had still not spoken a word to either myself or our boss. So now we're at 3 weeks of radio silence and HR contacts our boss to say new hire had reached out to say she's filing short term disability. Fine, whatever, we wait, and wait, and obviously, she never filed. So finally, a month after disappearing for the second time with zero communication, she was terminated. The amount of work I had to pick up thanks to her disappearing act was madness. I'm talking upwards of 80 hours a week for more than a month. I am still bitter about it. Sleep for 3 hours. I was brand new on the job, corporate thing, and my new co-worker came up to me on a weekend shift and said, I was up really late last night, I'm gonna go lay down for a few minutes. 3 hours later, he woke up and came out to work again, without any measure of apology. In the interim, one of the people we worked for found him asleep, and told my boss, he got a warning. Close second being a co-worker that hacked the company's network, using the term somewhat loosely, to get an internet access password we weren't allowed to have, would have gotten away with it if he hadn't also changed their file structure to have folder names like, Frick you, I want internet access, he also got a warning. Xkaoka closing early, not 5-10 minutes early, but nearly 2 hours, the reason was she just didn't feel like working. I've seen more than zero nurses mistreat patients, so I've seen too many. Unfortunately unless it's flagrant and there's enough eyewitnesses, and as long as it's on old people or severely mentally ill people who have little to no family support, nobody gives a flying crap. 
nurse got caught with her hand in the sharps bin and it still took months to prove she was stealing narcs. I work in the healthcare field. Had one co-worker who never wasted his narcotics properly with a witness he would just have them signed out solo and say oh yeah, patient, didn't want them so I disposed of it with zero verification, and had a lot of liquid narcotics whose count suddenly went mysteriously off after he'd been on shift. Somehow he did not get fired or even investigated. He wound up quitting after just a few months. Good riddance. This unfortunately is way too common. At my last job they found a nurse dead in the bathroom from an overdose. Whilst working at a local hospital, a nursing student snorting a line of whatever, in scrubs, in a hospital bathroom, to post on snapchat, or the two housekeepers who engaged in a fist fight on an elevator, only to continue said fight as they arrived at their destination. Woman screaming at the supervisor at the call center when people were on the phones. Cursing saying she would beat him up because he gave her too many leads. She just wanted the Glen Gary leads, not this Glen Ross Bulls. I didn't catch the person in action but I was the HR consultant so I did all of the new hire processing. Lady came in shaking like crazy, had to leave the processing to go home and get her id, came back high AF. Two weeks go by and she just stops showing up for her shifts. We also found used needles in the bathroom. She didn't die or anything. We checked in with her. But it's still so freaking sad. But yay. TL. DR. Lady shot up at work and got away with it. I used to work in a bar. One of the waiters, who was wearing an apron, would pull his nutsack out of his zipper and walk around lifting his apron and anyone and everyone that worked there. The customers never knew his balls were flapping in the breeze as he took their order. I worked from home at my last job and my co-worker would sometimes just not log in until like 11am and would just completely skip meetings that she was supposed to run. One time she missed a meeting with our boss and my boss just goes well I bet she was up late working so is coming in late. She was supposed to run. That's the bad part right there. Had 8 servers delivered very late one day and left outside the data center. Everything in boxes on a pallet. Janitor thinks it's trash. Takes all of them to the trash compactor and crushes them. Each box weighed 80 plus LBS. They weren't ours but a company we contracted with. We had to buy all new servers and the guy didn't even get to write up. He had a family member on the board. Not mine, but something an old buddy of mine did 15 plus years ago. He worked for a really big gaming company that was just about to ship a major title. Like, major. Because of beta testing, there was code in the game that would disable the beta copies the day after the game officially dropped. His job was to make sure that code was removed before they burned all of the official CDs for the game's release. Guess who forgot to remove the code? The company had already burned tens of thousands, maybe more of game discs and boxed them up for shipment before my buddy realized his mistake and came clean to his boss. They had to reburn, replace, and rebox every copy of the game and do it in time to meet the launch date. Cost a lot of people a lot of extra time and grief but, ultimately, my buddy got to keep his job. The company was Bethesda Softworks and I believe the game was more rewind. Their offices were in Rockville MD at the time and I used to go meet my friend over there for lunch every couple of weeks. If I recall correctly he was in charge of coding the sky effects for the game. Well, that and removing the code that would brick the game after release colon. I wouldn't fire him. Keeping him on sends an incredibly strong signal to everyone that the way to handle a mistake is to admit it. That's priceless. Finally one I can answer. Our department went for a team building overnight stay abroad. The next day when we were supposed to meet at the airport he was nowhere to be found. His phone was off. Bosses rang the hospitals. Missing persons report. You name it. A week later the bosses went back to the country to find him again. Nothing. Wife and child had he heard anything. Week later he turns up for work like nothing happened. He had decided to jump on an earlier flight to Thailand for a week's holiday without telling a soul. Couple of meetings with the bosses. Never mentioned again. Guess his wife made him feel it but that was never disclosed. There is essentially no way he didn't go there for freaky frick stuff. A guy who works at a local grocery store would get caught masturbating at work with the bathroom stall door open. He was caught so much that he was eventually relocated to the gas station. And he has a serious attitude problem because he thinks that it's because he's overweight. 
It's not because you're chubby, it's because of your chub. I work in the office of a major retailer. I have a co-worker who's made several negligent blunders that have costed the company millions in lost sales. He has regularly failed to monitor the flow of advertised goods until it is too late to react. Lost sales. He once decided that if someone he works with freaks up, it isn't his problem to fix it. He wouldn't even tell them about it so they could fix it. Of course, it quite literally is his problem to fix it. This caused lots of failed shipments and flows that, again, caused lost sales. He failed to monitor inventory levels on regular stock items. Sales obviously spiked during Christmas time, which has caused him to run out on half his inventory and thus lose sales. As of yet, he still hasn't fully normalized all of it. To my knowledge, he's only recently gotten a formal reprimand for that last one. How it took so long is beyond me. Meanwhile, retail floor employees are getting berated for not opening enough members accounts in two weeks. Crack the casing of the most expensive piece of equipment in the lab by headbutting it because he had anger issues. He was team leader for that section. Bonus points. He looked a lot like Phil Mitchell. Coworker once asked me if I would help him photoshop a letter of recommendation before an interview. This man has an MD. He has an MD or someone helped him photoshop his diploma to say he's got an MD. I wouldn't say fricked up, but I work closely with the federal government, and the number of people just hanging around until retirement, doing jobs that have been obsolete for 20 years, is remarkable. There's a dude I know whose only job is to scan things, like scan paper into PDFs. He's a federal employee being paid $50,000 in. Literally do this job. As part of my degree I must work in a place my college chooses for a semester, but still pay college fees. I scan all day, do nothing else. I am replacing a man who retired last year who was on 50,000 euros. I take a total of 2 hours off a day for breaks and have been told I am much more efficient than the last guy. Worked at Applebee's and this one server had decided she had enough of the bulls. She walked out in the middle of her shift, while she still had tables. Showed up the next day like nothing happened, and nothing did happen. She didn't get fired. She didn't get written up. She didn't get warned. She left everyone, including customers, high and dry as to where she was. I eventually grew to get along very well with her. That crap blew my mind though. My manager always showed up high and drunk at work, then would take breaks to smoke weed, and buy vodka at the nearest sack, and he pretty much hit on every girl that was working, but obviously nothing happened to him cause he was the manager. Sack equals liquor store, in Quebec, for those curious. Female co-worker printed off nudes of male co-worker and passed them out like flyers. Didn't even get to write up. That's a crime in most states. I would have sued their asses to next week. Some bozo made me a restaurant manager when I was 21. Very frequently after hours we drank from the bar and had late night cook-offs. Sounds like you improved staff morale and encouraged camaraderie in your staff. I am leaving the job partially for this reason. My manager speaks to all the employees like they are idiots and despite multiple HR reports she still works here. Talks down to people and belittles them. Makes decisions and tells people to do things just to throw her weight around. And rather than letting people take sick days she makes them take it as personal days. Oh also when people try to call out when they are legitimately sick she will try to make them feel bad so they won't call out and guilt trip them. And if someone actually calls out she would treat them like crap the day after as payment for calling out sick like how dare you get sick lol. What an absolute idiot. The point of sick days is not do you feel sick but will you get everyone else sick which has a much higher economic impact. Your manager is garbage. This guy at the DQ I worked at did all sorts of crazy crap. He pulled my head and screamed at me. He pushed an underage kid with a lot of force. He called a 15 year old girl a nice piece of butt. This dude was 34. He threatened to kill his ex's dogs as well. I can probably think of more or expand on this stuff if anyone is interested. The guy came to us from Illinois because he started dating one of the managers at my location. He had been through the prison system for the last decade or so. Highlights are assault, arson on a car, and arson on a home. After he finally left, he would keep calling the store and hang up if anyone other than his ex answered the phone. 
He would come in and just stare at everyone that worked there. It got so bad that the GM started carrying a gun to work. I would watch him through the security cameras and he would nonchalantly knock things off of counters and stuff. Just make someone else clean up his messes like it was nothing. He was particularly creepy towards little boys that were with their mothers. He would compliment the boys moms to the kids and tell them that they needed to protect her. All in all, he was one fricked walnut. Was out to lunch with three co-workers. Collectively, there are two males and two females. We're all attorneys. BTW. One of the males is very into the other woman. She is also a hijab wearing Muslim woman. The male co-worker proceeds to get up from eating and starts to massage female co-worker's head. Her hijab starts to fall off. We all tell him to stop. He explained that he was getting the brain spiders off. I was mortified. She was. So was the other male. But, he continued working there. Like this video and this good boy will play you a nice song. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.